Good morning, Central. Happy Friday. Glad you're joining us this morning. If you see somebody's name pop up of somebody watching along with us and you haven't talked to them in a while, just let them know in the comments that you miss them, that you're glad that they're here um, and you're looking forward to seeing them again face to face in the future, hopefully sometime very soon, right? Um, I'd like to spend my next few Good Morning Centrals going through the book of Philippians with you. We'll just take it kind of piece by piece and see how much we get through. Uh, but I thought that'd be a good way for us to start uh, just reading God's Word together. And then I'll just have a few uh, short you know, comments or maybe some mornings I'll probably just lead us in prayer and kind of use uh, what we've just read to sort of guide our prayers. But for this morning, we're going to start right at the beginning. The book of Philippians is written by the, um, by the Apostle Paul. He wrote a letter back to the church of Philippi where he spent some time basically starting a brand new church, planning a church. And it's, he has um, a very intimate relationship with them. Uh, the words that he uses to talk about the church members uh, in this particular city are very intimate. Uh, you could tell that he had good relationships with them, and I enjoy reading it. Um, it's, I think it's going to be a very helpful book for us as we go forward. So I'm going to just read uh, starting in verse 1 of chapter 1. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to interrupt Paul just for a minute. You guys know that uh, many of the New Testament books that were letters are written a little bit backwards from the way we would write our letters. I would write a letter that said, Dear Heidi, at the very beginning, so I would put the recipient of the letter at the beginning. Uh, they put the authors of the letter at the very beginning. So here we see that Paul and Timothy are writing this letter to God's holy people at Philippi and along with the overseers and deacons, so some of the leaders of that church. Moving on in verse 3. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart. And whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless on the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Christ Jesus, to the glory and praise of God. We have several friends in our life that um, when they come and visit us, we just kind of pick up where we left off. Do you guys have any friends like that in your lives? Um, most of the people uh, in my life who've been friend, that, that are in that category, we've been friends for many, many years. Uh, most of them came about uh, from our time when we served overseas in Italy. And it was that kind of pressure cooker of an environment, of a ministry, that caused us to form very, very deep friendships. Uh, there's a family that lives in Texas, the Casey's. Uh, we still are in touch with them. Our kids are still in touch with their kids. Uh, we're going to one of their kids' wedding in October. And every time we see each other, whenever we get to spend time with each other, uh, it's just like no, no time at all has passed. And it makes me kind of see what Paul was talking about when he says, I thank my God every time I remember you. Uh, just this week, we were super blessed to host in our house uh, the Ridgeway families. We first met the Ridgeways uh, when we served overseas in Europe. And they, are, they work as um, teachers in a Christian school in Budapest, Hungary. And it is such a blessing whenever they get to come back to the United States uh, they always make sure and visit us, spend some time at our house, and we stay up far too late and tell funny stories about things that have happened to us, uh, memories that we've shared, the Christmas that we spent together in Budapest, uh, things like that. Um, they leave an impression on you, don't they? And the memories that we get to share uh, make me say about the Ridgeways, I thank my God every time I remember you. So here's my question. Because kind of the crucible of ministry uh, forges those deep, deep friendships. I'm wondering who is it in your life 
that you can say it's kind of similar to what Paul said. I thank my God every time I remember you. Who is it that you have uh, spent time serving in God's kingdom together? Who are the friends that when they stop by, it's as if no time at all has ever passed? And what I would encourage you to do and what I was blessed to be able to do this week is just spend some time and tell that group of people, those friends, um, thank you. Let them know that you thank God uh, every time they pop into your mind, every time a goofy story or a silly memory pops into your head about them, uh, that you thank God for that, that you know that their, their, that their friendship, the relationship you have with that person uh, goes beyond surface level and talking about the weather, but it goes uh, deep and it is a friendship that you have become to, that you've, you have come to rely on and to trust. I think far too often we forget to tell people how important they are in our lives. And now more than ever is the time for us to take a moment to say, hey, you know what? Every time you come into my mind, I thank God for you. Um, I'd just like to guide us in prayer this morning. And then before you get busy with your day, uh, send a text message, write an email, send, make a quick phone call. And whoever it is that God puts in your mind, uh, let them know that you thank God for them. We pray with me, church. Father, I thank you for the book of Philippians. I pray that you would guide our discussion time and allow us uh, to be blessed and to glean from the teachings of Paul and Timothy as they write to this uh, young church. Father, we thank you for the blessing that we have of friends uh, that, that go very, very deep, that have made an impression on us and that, and that you have allowed us to make an impression on them. Father, we thank you for the encouragement that those friendships can bring about. We thank you for the fun memories and the good times that those bring about. And we thank you for the support that they bring to us in difficult times. Father, we need to rely on these, on those deep, deep friendships that I, tr I really believe that only, uh, only deep friendships forged in kind of a mutual service of you can, can bring about. Father, I ask that you would help us to be mindful of those people and to take time out um, today and let people know that when they come into our mind, we thank God for them. Father, we give this day to you and we ask you to help us to be your hands and feet. I pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good day, church. We'll see you tomorrow.